Hello everyone, welcome back to Legally Blind. So this is gonna be a slightly different type of video, kind of a walk and talk. I apologize in advance if my hand is gonna shake a lot. I'm in my ancestral family farm, if you will. So much beauty all around. The quiet Egyptian countryside. I wanted to walk you through this place while talking to you about Grace Halloran's book. Uh, I mentioned this book in my previous video, my, my latest video. I want to talk about the book itself and Grace and uh, comment on a few things that have interested me. Uh, Grace is an amazing, very inspiring person. Uh, well, was. She passed away not too long ago. She was the pioneer of treating or managing retinitis pigmentosa in the United States. And she started in the United States and then ended up giving workshops all over the world and um, helping thousands of people. The center she built in the US is still there. I can't remember the name right now. I will put it on the screen somewhere and I'll, I'll link to it below. I'm not going to spoil the book for you, but there are a few things I need to mention that are in the book. Grace had a tough childhood, tough teenage years. She ended up in prison at some point, and it really did seem like her life was totally falling apart. And right when she thought things were about to get better, bam, she got diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa and was told she would go completely blind uh, in a few years time. However, she managed to preserve her eyesight for much, much longer than that. And to also preserve her son's vision. Uh, her son was also born with retinitis pigmentosa and uh, she was very determined to help him as much as humanly possible as you would if you had a child. Um, this is my ancestral family home. This is where my little part of the family lives. It's a big family, several houses. This one is where I stay when I come here. And this field is where I learned to play soccer. Uh, now no, no one plays here anymore. So uh, one of the farmers who is a distant, very distant family member grows stuff here tills the land and, and grows food. So anyways, back to Grace. What Grace did was that she simply refused to take no for an answer. She refused to believe the doctors that told her there's nothing that can be done about this, that there's no treatment, there's no cure. There is no cure, but there is treatment that can help you improve your vision significantly, or at least just preserve what you have. Once she got the diagnosis, and especially once her son had the diagnosis, she went on a quest to find out what the best that medicine and alternative medicine and every kind of healing out there in the world had to offer to help with retinitis pigmentosa. And she was very surprised to discover that there is actually a lot that can be done. Oh, there's a dog on the... Hi, dog. Hi, dog. Lots of stray dogs here. Through exploring all of these different options and trying them on herself and her son and anyone who'd listen, she ended up developing a complete... Oops, I upset the dogs. Now my dog is coming to help. Oopsie. Okay, I actually don't want to disturb the dogs too much, so I will go away. The program that Grace developed includes many different types of treatments. Some of them are based in traditional medicine, others are in experimental medicine, some in alternative medicine, Chinese medicine, all kinds of different types of healing. This is why Grace was not taken very seriously because she was not 100% because she was willing to look into anything, including stuff that was not yet scientifically proven. She did go on eventually to, to have a PhD and her program, like I said, is, is still being used in many parts. 
uh, the center is still around, her eye health center that she started is still around. And the program does help many, many people. Some of the things included in this program are things like microcurrent stimulation, similar to the device I spoke about um, in, the, in, in a previous video, uh, the OcuStim machine. It inclu includes acupressure and acupuncture. Uh, it includes things like color therapy, I'm not sure if that's still in there, healthy diet. Uh, it's, it's a holistic program, basically. I don't want to talk too much about the technicalities of the program. This is not what this video really is about. And you can read all about that yourself uh, easily. What this video is about more is about the spirit that Grace had and also about some of the social issues that I wanted to comment on. This is my uh, mater maternal grandfather's house and uh, this whole path that leads to the gate that we come in from. I'm not sure if it, if it shows. Ah, I think now it shows. It's somewhere there is the gate where we come in and we used to ride bicycles all over this place and um, hang out on the porches and eat together and it's good times. So Grace had a very positive and upbeat attitude most of the time. She did have her very, very dark times of like depression, anxiety. However, she always pulled herself back up and uh, went on with her quest to just do the best she can really to uh, tackle this disease and help people. And she did, she ended up helping thousands and thousands of people by now it's probably tens of thousands if not more she had this attitude of taking responsibility for her life and uh, just doing her absolute best and refusing to let obstacles get in her way and she was able to accomplish a lot so if you are struggling with uh, your diagnosis and or actually even any other disability even if it's not vision related this is a pretty good book to um to give you hope and to inspire you but there are also a couple of things i feel are important to talk about regarding patient responsibility social responsibility stuff like that look at this crazy bougainvillea climbing on this cassowarina tree. The bougainvillea is the stuff with the white and pink flowers. These are, I guess, two different bougainvilleas, maybe more. And then they, they are climbing plants, so they're climbing this tree because that's what they have. And um, uh, that looks like it was recently chopped. Yeah. Big fan of cassowarina trees. I have, a, I have one at home that I'm trying to grow as a bonsai. Beautiful things. There are many other characters kind of similar to, to Grace who have defied all the odds and broken all the rules and kind of, you know, they, they did all the things <laughs> and they uh, became very successful despite a disability that they were told was debilitating. Um, and I think that's, this is a, a great message to be able to understand that no matter what disability you have, it is, does not have to be debilitating. However, there are, there are a few social issues we need to talk about regarding this attitude, actually. Privilege is involved a lot in how much you can defy your odds. Grace was not rich, but she was white, and she's also American. Just having the, the American nationality in this world is a privilege and especially if you have the nationality and you live there, you have access to lots of things that many people around the world do not have access to. And it's important to keep that in mind. Look at the dogs. Where are the dogs? Where are the dogs? Ah, oh. babies. Babies. So I, I, um, I take some issue with people trying to put too much responsibility on the patients telling them that, you know, they're not doing everything they can to be better, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we have to be much more understanding than that. We have to be much more compassionate about that because 
it is not easy to do what Grace did if you don't have white privilege, if you don't have, I don't know what even to call, like, citizenship privilege. I don't know. <laughs> if you don't have the level of education required to advocate for yourself, uh, the skills required to advocate for yourself. Grace was a great public speaker. She's also pretty extroverted and just such a people person, which many others are not. And sometimes, sometimes stories like Grace's story or, you know, other, other characters similar to Grace, like, you know, Stephen Hawking, uh, Helen Keller. These characters, sometimes when we hear their stories, it actually has the opposite effect of what you hope it would have. Um, instead of being inspiring, you actually feel, you might actually feel worse because you, you might see someone like Stephen Hawking who could barely move a single muscle do what he did and Helen Keller who could neither see nor hear do what she did and Grace and other people and you think to yourself oh, my, my situation or my disability is so much less than their disability and look what they did and look what I'm doing with my life and then you sort of beat yourself up about how everything's going for you and that is not helpful and it's not fair not everyone is meant to be like these people not everyone has the privilege to be able to do what they did and also some people are simply so caught up in survival that there is no there's no room to breathe and do other things uh, if, if you have a disability but you're so poor or you have to you don't even have to be that poor you're just you have to work all the time and there is no chance for you to actually take very good care of yourself you you can't do anything about it and this is a problem that is systematic and has to do with of course capitalism and how life works in these modern times what are you gonna do are you gonna you know leave your job and pursue activism? Are you gonna um, stay at home and not do any work because work stresses you out and stress makes your vision worse? It's not really an option. I would love to be able to, you know, not do any work on my computer, not do any grading, not, you know, not have to deal with the eye strain of my job, but I can't. It's my job. And not only is it just my job, I actually like it and I want to do it. So, similar to this situation, if you already have, you know, a job that you love and that you're passionate about and that you need in order to survive, you can't just drop everything and pursue nothing but your, your healing and your mental health uh, and your physical health. Actually, the eye health center that I mentioned in a previous video and linked to, I will, I will link to that again, they actually have to turn people away sometimes if they are too busy, okay? So the privilege of time is another like really important privilege. So, so yeah, this was the one major thing that I wanted to talk about regarding this book because it's not just, you know, this book, but many people in general, when they talk about disabilities or people with disabilities or people who are chronically ill, they often put too much responsibility on the patient and blame, sometimes blame the patient for not being proactive enough about their health. And life is more complicated than that, guys. And yes, these people should be able to take care of themselves as much as possible. And society should make that possible for them to do. Ableism is a problem, uh, but also just the way that life is set up um, <laughs> needs to change. It's a systematic problem is what I'm trying to say. I'm back here at the house. I love this tree. I think my grandfather planted this tree to wrap around the house, kind of hug the house. It's lovely. I think it's another bougainvillea, just a very uh, unusual color. What do you want, baby? She wants to play. Where's your friend? Where's my dog? Your friend? <laughs> Where, what did you do with him? Cutie. Anyways, that is really all I wanted to say about the book. 
I think you should definitely read it. It has a lot of information and it's extremely useful for you, especially if you have uh, retinitis pigmentosa or any retinal condition. Um, you will hear stories in that book of people who have dramatically improved their vision after believing that this was impossible, according to what doctors told them. Maybe some of the things in the program are things that you can incorporate yourself into your life, even if it's not everything. Yeah, definitely read the book. It's great. But keep in mind that there's more to healing and getting better and, and improving your condition. There's a lot more to it than simply just wanting it to happen. And some of it is, is not your fault and, or, or not your responsibility. So um, that's it about the book and, and thanks for watching. I'm just gonna now take you silently through some of my favorite parts of this farm. Uh, as kids, we used to come here every single weekend and just play soccer till our feet fell off and ride bicycles and, and play games and uh, have huge family gatherings. And I don't know how much longer we're gonna have this place still, I hope forever, but um, who knows? So I would like to record some of my favorite spots on here, just in case, um, just in case it's gone. So here we go. Thanks again for watching and enjoy my farm. Full of mulberries.